in this lecture, we're going to start learning about the actual technical side of perspective and how to draw it. So there's three types of perspective. There's one point perspective, two point and three point perspective. In this first lecture, we'll be just focusing on one point perspective. So first, let's break down perspective into its different components. So the first thing we have when it comes to all perspective is we need a horizon line. A horizon line is basically that line you see way off in the distance. If you're looking at a flat landscape, it's that line where the sky meets the surface of the earth. That's basically the horizon line. It's typically about at eye level, um, but that's going to be your horizon line. Once you know where your horizon line is, now you can go ahead and add your points to that. So we can add our vanishing point. So in this first one, we're doing one point perspective, meaning that there's only one vanishing point. Now this is where all of our perspective lines vanish to. After we have our vanishing points, we can start drawing in our perspective guidelines. So as you can see here, these guidelines, they move off from our vanishing point in an outwards direction. So you can draw a line at any point on this paper or on this um, canvas, and it just needs to start at this point and move outwards anywhere you want it to. And then we use these as guidelines to draw. So let's go ahead and let's actually draw our own horizon line and our vanishing point, and let's start doing our own perspective. So I have a new canvas here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a new layer so we're not painting on our background. And then using a brush, we're just gonna go ahead and paint our horizon line. So if you're working in Photoshop, all you have to do is just hold down shift and you can draw a straight line. Depending on the software you're using, you might have to do something different. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and redraw that and bring the size of my brush down. I don't want it that large. So draw a vanishing or a horizon line just like that. So in this case, we're going to put it in the center of our canvas, but sometimes you might have it more down here and sometimes you might have it more up here. It really just depends. Um, and we'll get more into that later and why you would want to change the height of your horizon line. So once we have that, let's go ahead and decide where our vanishing point is gonna be. So in this case, let's just put it about in the center of our image. All right, so now that we have our vanishing point, we can start use, drawing our guidelines. So first, let's try drawing something really simple like a rectangular cube. So what I'll do is I'm just going to draw a line coming off like this. You can either draw it by hand, or if you want, you can use in your software you're using, there should be a way to draw a straight line. We can go ahead and just draw a straight line coming off of that, like that. Let's go ahead and do another one above the horizon line. So as you can see here, if it's below the horizon line, it's gonna be moving downwards in that direction. If it's above it, it's gonna be like that. Next, let's go ahead and let's connect these with a straight line. So I'm just gonna do a straight up and down line just like that, and we'll do another one further down. And as you can see, I'm using these guidelines as a guide to know where I should stop those lines. Then we can go ahead and draw a straight line like this, bring that downwards. We'll do it the same thing from that corner. And now we have a rectangular cube that's been drawn in perspective. So if we wanted to, we could go ahead and we could just erase these lines, these guidelines, because we don't really need them anymore. And let's just have a look at what that looks like. If you wanted to, you could even do these on separate layers and you could just turn off the guidelines and then just draw your cube on top of that on a different layer. But now you can see we have a cube there in perspective. All right, let's try another one. So this time let's draw a cube above the horizon line. Now what this is gonna do is it's going to make it so we can see the bottom of the surface. So right now we can't see the top of the surface of our cube or the bottom because the bottom is below the horizon line and the top is above the horizon line. But let's have a look and try an experiment, see what happens when we do it above. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw a line coming from the center or the vanishing point, And I'm gonna bring it up like this. And then I'll do another one coming up like this. And we're gonna do the same thing again. We're just gonna draw a straight line down like that. Then I can go ahead and erase this part real quick because we don't need that anymore. And then coming back to my brush tool, I'm gonna draw this into a square. Like that, go ahead and erase that part right there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna connect from our vanishing point and we need to connect it out to this corner. If you can see the top or the bottom surface, you need to make sure that you're connecting to every edge of your shape. So just like that. Then we'll go ahead and what we wanna do is just like we drew this line right here that matches this line right here, we need to do the same thing over here. So a line needs to be matching this 
So we'll go ahead and draw it like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and draw a line on the bottom as well and do the same thing, just like that. So now we can go ahead and erase these guidelines, just like that. And now you can see that we have two cubes that are in the same perspective. So these actually match each other. They are in the same world, basically. They're not just floating off doing their own thing. They're actually matching perspective. So what if we wanted to draw something a little bit different, such as a cylinder? Well, let's go ahead and try that. So we're going to go ahead and just draw a circle. Now this doesn't actually have to be perfect. It could actually be something a little bit more organic. So just something like that is fine. And basically what we want to do is just like on this cube and this cube, we want to connect the lines from our vanishing point to the outside edges or corners of our shape. So starting from our vanishing point, I'll go ahead and draw a straight line out to here like that. And do the same thing on the other edge. So just and as you can see, it's getting cut off right there. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we connect that more right about here, where like my arrow is drawn. So let's go ahead and undo that line, and let's try it again. All right, much better. And then what we want to do is we want to transfer this line right there a little bit further down, just like that, just eyeballing it. And as you can see, what happens is even though we're copying the same curve of this line, it actually gets a little bit smaller the further down it goes. And so just like I taught you at the beginning of this section, things in perspective, the further away they get, the smaller they get. And that's because they're following these perspective lines that get smaller as they go out towards the vanishing point, which is why it's called the vanishing point is because as it gets further away towards the vanishing point, it begins to vanish. You can't even see it anymore if it gets too far away from you. So for example, if I were to draw another one of these curved lines down here to match it, it's a lot smaller than this curved line right here, but it's still the same curved line. So go ahead and undo that. And then we can just go ahead and erase this. Perfect. So let's try one more example. Let's say that we wanted to draw something a little bit more organic, something that's not a typical shape. So let's say we wanted to do something like Something like that. Kind of looks like a jack. So what we need to do is we need to follow the same thing we followed with all of these. We need to make sure that our, van or our guidelines are connecting to the outside edges of our shape. So coming from our vanishing point, we're going to connect to this edge right there. We'll do the same thing on this side. We'll do the same thing on these shapes. and we even need to do it up here on these. But actually, looking at this, it's probably gonna be a straight line like that and a straight line like that. You'll barely even see it, so we'll just, we'll leave those out for now. But what we wanna do is down here, depending on how thick we want this shape to be, we need to copy these same curves and lines a little bit further down. So this right here, for example, needs to come down, let's say, right about there. Same with this guy. So we want the same distance right there. We wanna copy that on this as well. So we want about the same distance so that our shape stays about the same object the whole time. Then we can go ahead and erase these guidelines. All right, perfect. So there we go. Now we just drew a few different types of shapes in perspective. The cylinder could probably be a little bit more round, but that's okay. It's still, whatever shape that is, it's still actually drawn in perspective. So let's go ahead and have a look at some real world examples. So right here, I have a photograph, and this is using one point perspective. So when you see photographs looking down a street or something like that, it typically is using one point perspective. There's only one point, one vanishing point. So let's go ahead and let's try breaking this down into its actual perspective guidelines. So I'm gonna add a new layer on top of this image, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab a red just so you can see it a little bit better. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill this layer with white I'll bring down the opacity, and this is just so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. We're going to kind of tone down the photograph so we can see my perspective lines better. So switching back to red, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find my vanishing point. So my vanishing point is probably going to be somewhere right about here. And the way I know that is because if we look at all of these lines, so the top of the buildings, for example, that's all one guideline right there. Same with on the other side. Same with these lines on the road, and even the crosswalk lines are following the perspective. 
And so we can see that all of those lines are basically pointing towards that one point. So it's probably gonna be about there. But what we can do to make sure of that is we can actually start drawing in our guidelines and see where they cross each other. So for example, I can draw one right here and do one right here as well. And we wanna make sure that they're following it the whole way. I can also do one off of this crosswalk like that. And sometimes you might place it in the wrong spot. So for example, if I click right here and I'm gonna draw a line coming back over to here. If I were to click over here, you'll see that it's not actually following this line of the crosswalk because I clicked in the wrong spot. So go ahead and undo it if you accidentally don't click in the right spot or create that line going to the right place. But it should follow that line basically exactly. Like that. We can go ahead and do the top edge of these buildings. Now these buildings have a lot of detail in them and they get a little bit more complicated, but all of these lines are basically all following the perspective. And then what we can do is we can break these down into simple shapes. So for example, this building right here, we can just draw a straight line coming across and just break it down into a simple rectangle. We could go ahead and draw a line coming from here to here. And then we can go ahead and erase this just so we get this line further out here. We can break that up into separate buildings. We can add lines coming down all of these to break them up into separate buildings. And you'll also notice that the further towards the vanishing point we get, the closer those buildings are going to appear together. So right here we get a wider distance, and then the next one gets a little bit shorter. So it's important to pay attention to that when you're drawing. All right, and then you can see over here, we can break these down. Um, we can even break it down into the sidewalk. So we can click on our vanishing point and then come all the way out to there. And actually we need to bring that vanishing point down just a little bit so it can follow that sidewalk line. But you can see we can break down that sidewalk line. We can even break down the edge of the sidewalk. So now we have this edge surface right here. Let's go ahead and draw a line coming up like this. We'll break this up into its own separate building. All right, perfect. And we can even draw a line like this, just a straight line for that crosswalk line. Um, the tops of these crosswalk pieces can have a line drawn on them. We could erase in between them if we wanted to, just to show that those lines are for the top of the crosswalk paint. This should be making sense to you now. So we basically have a vanishing point and all these buildings are basically disappearing towards that vanishing point. All of their guidelines are moving towards that vanishing point. All right, that brings us to the end of this lecture. So I'll see you in the next one.